Uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, this is joint work with Vladimir Kolesnikov from Bell Labs. Excuse me, how do I? So the, uh, our work is motivated by secure computation, which is the most general problem in cryptography. Um, there's a major research effort currently, which is uh, trying to make, uh, trying to move secure computation from theory to practice. Uh, the focus is not only on improving the asymptotic efficiency, but also on the concrete efficiency. And work in this area also addresses implementation as well as systems issues. Uh, in the last five years, there have been some tremendous amount of uh, breakthrough results in theory as well as in practice. Uh, on the theory side, we have this amazing result which, can, uh, which, which lets you to do secure computation with just constant overhead over an insecure evaluation. However, the breakthrough results of fully homomorphic encryption, uh, we can even uh, obtain uh, secure computation protocols with optimal communication overhead for a broad class of functions. We can also use ORAM-based uh, secure computation protocols to, uh, to take advantage of, uh, 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 of the RAM model of computation, and you can also do, uh, uh, perform secure computation in sublinear time. On the practical side, uh, there have been a lot of uh, algorithmic as well as uh, implementation level improvements for uh, Yao and GMW-based protocols, and also a hybrid of Yao as well as GMW protocols. And the uh, time uh, uh, results for, uh, for implementing uh, YAO protocols especially is very, very impressive. Now you can gobble an AES circuit in 637 microseconds. Um, so in spite of the, the major interest in, um, uh, in implementations and as well as uh, these amazing results on the left side, uh, we still don't, our fastest implementations on the right still make use of uh, YAO and GMW protocols from, from the 80s, right? So one reason is, uh, is that obviously maybe, you know, in these theoretical results, the, the constants are very high. But maybe there's also a hierarchy of complexity or efficiency. Namely, the cost of FHE is, is and will probably always be by orders of magnitude bigger than the cost of public key primitives. And the cost which in turn will, is and will probably always be by orders of magnitude bigger than the cost of symmetric key primitives which uh, in turn is and will probably always be by orders of magnitude bigger than the cost of just one time pad. Right? So the topic of our talk, OD extension, is motivated by this difference in efficiency between uh, public key operations and symmetric key operations. So in the first part of the talk, uh, we'll give a more detailed motivation about uh, uh, OD extension and we'll also uh, explain the problem. So public key primitives such as uh, key agreement or oblivious transfer are usually hard to implement heuristically. Uh, they uh, typically tend to be uh, algebraic in nature, so there are more and more cryptanalytic attacks. So the parameters have to be bigger, and they usually end up more expensive. On the other hand, for symmetric key operations like uh, pseudo-random generator or hash functions, these are typically easier to implement heuristically. There are a lot of candidates, and the parameters are typically smaller, and therefore they're also cheaper in practice to implement. This is also backed by theory, which says that a broad class of public key primitives cannot be black box reduced to symmetric key primitives in general. In concrete terms, what this means is that we have a factor of three to four orders of magnitude difference in efficiency between public key primitives and symmetric key primitives. And in the particular case of uh, symmetric key operations such as AES, which are, well, wi which are widely used, Intel even provides uh, an instruction set which, which makes them even faster in practice. So OK, we cannot do public key primitives from symmetric key primitives. But uh, what is the next big thing? Maybe just with a few instances of public key primitives and a lot of symmetric key operations, maybe we can generate many, many instances of public key uh, operations. right? So this is known as extension of a primitive. And we know that extending public, encryp public key encryption is easy. And uh, this proceeds by just encrypting the payload with the symmetric key. And then you encrypt the symmetric key with, uh, with the public key. So you only do one public key operation. So this has had a huge practical impact on our everyday use of uh, encryption. So this naturally raises the question, what about extending other prim public key primitives, such as OT, uh, such as oblivious transfer? So recall in the problem of oblivious transfer, there's a sender with two inputs, x0 and x1, and there's a receiver with input r. At the end of the protocol, the sender does not learn anything, but then the receiver learns the sender input, which corresponds to a selection bit. So OT is a very fundamental building block in SFE. In Yao, it is used to select one out of two gobble keys in an oblivious fashion. Uh, in GMW, it's more intensively used, where you evaluate each AND gate in the circuit using an OT protocol. So we know that the cost of OT is uh, significantly high. We cannot get it from symmetric key operations. But suppose we have OTs on short strings. 
Then by a standard application of uh, pseudo-random generators, we can get OTs on long strings. So this is called OT length extension. Uh, the more non-trivial problem, which is OT instance extension, or just called OT extension, which we know is fortunately possible, we only need K public key operations, like K seed OTs, and an additional n symmetric key operations. And this allows us to perform uh, an arbitrary polynomial number of uh, OT uh, operations just, just using these K public key operations. Because we cut down on the number of public key operations, this has naturally had a huge practical impact on the, on, uh, on the feasibility of SFE, to the extent that all recent implementations rely on OT extension for efficiency. So Beaver in 96 gave the first OT extension protocol. The first practical OT extension protocol was given by Shai, Killian, Nisim, and Petrank, which we'll call IKNP construction. Uh, this was given in crypto 2003. Uh, later works have uh, looked at improving the efficiency of OT extension in the malicious case, uh, and also on improving our understanding of, uh, of OT extension and when it's possible. So in this work, we'll improve uh, the, the IKMP construction for the semi-honest case. We'll provide uh, both asymptotic as well as concrete improvements. So in the next part of the talk, we will uh, uh, explain, uh, we'll describe uh, Ishai et al.'s construction of OD extension. In fact, we'll use Ishai slides from Crypto 2003 to do this. Uh, the first and the main step of IKNP is to do a reduction from, uh, from NOTs to uh, KOTs, but on n bit strings. This will also incur an additional uh, linear number of symmetric key operations. And then the next step is the length extension case, which we already saw before. So this allows us to reduce OT on long strings to OTs on short strings. And this will also incur another additional cost of uh, linear number of uh, symmetric key operations. Right. So in the main reduction, uh, uh, we, let the we let the receiver pick a random n by k matrix uh, T, and then the sender picks a random um, row vector S, and then uh, the receiver and the sender will participate in K instances of OT, except their roles will be reversed. So in, in each instance, the receiver is going to pick two columns uh, of length N, such that the first column of each pair is, is exactly the pair corresponding to the matrix T, and the second column will be uh, the first column exerted with uh, a random, the, the selection uh, vector R. And then the, the, sender will, the, the sender will actually choose, his, uh, choose one out of these two columns using his uh, random row selection vector. Right. Then the sender obtains a matrix Q as the output of this OD protocol. And let's look at how the row of, of this matrix Q looks like. When RI equals 0, QI will equal TI. Uh, and when RI equals 1, uh, in each pair, the, the, the bits will be different. So in this case, QI will equal TI X or S, right? So in this case, note that the receiver knows TI, but it will not know TI X or S. So in the first case, he will know QI, but not QI X or S. And in the second case, he will know QI X or S, which is TI, but not uh, QI. So this says that maybe we can use QI as well as QI X or S as mass for the OT. Uh, but then we have to destroy correlations between different rows of, of this uh, different, OD, uh, different rows of this matrix. So we use uh, a random oracle edge to destroy these correlations, right? And then the receiver will pick his output depending on uh, edge of TI. This is how we unmask them. So the IKMP protocol is very simple and elegant, uh, and it's also very efficient. So if you look at the communication cost. Uh, uh, of n instances of OT, where the sender inputs are of length L, then in the main reduction, which we just saw before, it's just hashing this, uh, the, the XI0 and XI1. So this will be 2 NL bits, whereas the length extension, which used the PSG, will be 2 NK bits. So in Yao, the, we need to transfer keys of length L equals K, so the main reduction and the length extension roughly uh, are, are exactly equal. So in, in GMW, we only need to transfer L equals 1, but in this case, Somewhat surprisingly, the cost of the length extension is far more dominant than the cost of the main reduction. So this is the question. You know, maybe, maybe there's some hope for improvement here. Right? So in the next part of the talk, we'll uh, propose a, a more a general framework for IKMP, and we'll also show how to improve the uh, efficiency of, uh, of IKMP. So uh, as a starting point, we take a closer look at IKMP, and we see that uh, the receiver is going to select this n by k matrix, which is a random matrix. And then it is going to generate this other matrix, which is just, uh, I mean, the i-th column here will be the i-th column here, XOR the selection vector R, right? 
So in other words, U is exactly equal to T XOR capital R, where capital R is a matrix in which all rows are exactly identical, which is equal to the selection vector of the receiver. Right? If, if we switch to the dual view, then we see that the ith row, in, the, uh, in the ith row of uh, capital R, we see that uh, it contains k copies of, uh, of Ri. So this means there's a row-wise encoding going on, particularly zero maps to zero to the k, and one maps one to the k. So we see that the efficient protocol of IKNP at some basic level is using row-wise repetition encoding. Right? So this naturally raises the question, can we use more sophisticated encodings? After all, uh, repetition encoding is a low-rate uh, code. So suppose we use the code C, and we assume that Ri comes from a larger domain, say 1 through M. Then we use the code C to map Ri to C of Ri, which is now a cable string. So now let's say that the receiver, using his uh, selection R Ri, is going to construct this matrix C of R. It's called C of R. And then uh, let's see how the IKNP protocol works in this case. So in the first step, he's going to take uh, the matrix C of R, and then he's going to additively share it as T and U, so it's T X or U. And then again, he's going to participate uh, acting as the sender in K instances of OT. Now, he's, uh, now the columns will, the I, I, in the ith OT, he'll use TI and UI, where these are the columns of T and U, respectively. So once again, uh, the sender will, uh, will uh, obtain the result of the OT as, uh, as a matrix Q. And then in the earlier case, in the IKNP case, we saw that QI was either TI or TIX or S. So in this case, what happens is that uh, we'll have QI equals TI. XOR C of Ri bitwise standard with S. It's not terribly complicated. So uh, when C is the repetition code as a sanity check, we can see that uh, this is exactly the same as IKNP. In particular, when Ri equals 0, C of Ri will be the all zeros vector. So you will have QI equals TI. And when uh, Ri equals 1, then C of Ri will be the all ones vector, in which case you will have uh, QI equals TI XOR S. Right? So now you will have uh, M masks, which are generated in, in the same case as before. The mask are generated as QI, X, or C of R, bitwise standard with S. And once again, we can show that uh, the receiver will know only TI. And, uh, and therefore, uh, it, he'll be able to mask the right, the right value uh, and get the correct sender input. So uh, again, so the main reduction is perfectly secure against the malicious uh, sender. Uh, in particular, the malicious sender gets only the matrix Q, which is just uh, a random independent share of, uh, of the encoding. Uh, against the semi-honest receiver, we can get statistical security. This is because uh, there is no loss in security unless the random oracle is queried on one of these other paths which are used for masking. Right? So the loss in security will be M, which is the number of COVID, and then uh, times 2 to the negative D, uh, where uh, D is the minimum distance of, uh, of the linear code C. So, so note that in, our, in the case, we, we had our selection coming from 1 through M. So, so in effect, we are actually doing uh, uh, 1 out of M OT instead of 1 out of 2 OT. Uh, but then we increased the, the cost of the main deduction, which was 2, uh, 2 NL to N ML. Right? And then we use a standard transformation of 1 out of, uh, uh, 1 out of 2 OT. I mean, we reduce uh, 1 out of 2 OT to uh, n over log m instances of 1 out of m OT or slightly larger, st longer strings. And this allows us to uh, express the communication cost as, as a function of m. So now we have a free variable m, which we can use to balance the cost of the main reduction and the length extension. Right? So in concrete terms, if we use the Hadamard codes for encoding, uh, uh, still have a minimum distance k over 2. And uh, therefore, for, for this case, we can show that we can get a factor of two improvement for one out of two OT, and also for the resulting uh, MPC protocols like GMW, uh, for the, even for the multi-party case, for k equals 256. There are additional optimizations, especially in the, uh, in the length extension case, which are, uh, this is algorithmic, but not asymptotic. Uh, but these can lead to a factor, I mean, combined with, uh, combined with our Haramad codes, this will lead to a factor of 3.5 improvement over, uh, over the unoptimized IKNP protocol. It, I think this was also independently <coughs> discovered by Ashraf et al., which is going to appear in CCS later this year. Uh, we also uh, improved the asymptotic cost over IKNP per OT. So in IKNP, it used O of k bits, whereas uh, for L equals 1, and we use O of k over log k bits. So to wrap up, uh, we saw that um, um, 
OT extension is motivated by this difference in efficiency between uh, public key primitives and symmetric key primitives. And this has had a huge impact on the practicality of, uh, of, secure, uh, of secure function evaluation. So in this talk, we propose the coding theory framework for IKNP. Uh, this can be pro insecure in either the random oracle model, or uh, which we use a special type of hash functions known as code correlation robust hash functions, which are a generalization of the IKNP correlation robust hash functions. Uh, as a result, we can get uh, concrete improvements for uh, multi-party GMW, for also one out of two OT, as well as for one out of MOT if you use more sophisticated codes. Uh, so I would like to end my talk by raising this issue of uh, the efficiency of GMW versus uh, Yao. So in many recent implementations, uh, they, they implement Yao. This is more so prevalent in the, in the malicious case. Uh, and also in the semi honest case, Yao is there are more implementations of Yao, but a recent line of work has shown that uh, a lot of algorithmic improvements which are possible to GMW as well, and uh, our work also fits in this line of work. Thank you. <laughs>